This picture is taken from Montgomery Statistical Quality Control textbook. Uh, I showed in one of the video how to calculate these probabilities. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to calculate these probabilities. Uh, so, in the in this uh, one previously, we have shown you if the process is centered. So, you have a coffee machine that is designed to produce coffee at 180 degree Fahrenheit and it is producing at that uh, at that specification at that target level now something happened to the machine it's probably this is getting old it's drawing more current and producing coffee at higher temperature than 180 is maybe 200 degree Fahrenheit uh, however, typically the case uh, for a coffee machine is usually it does not produce enough heat uh, over a uh, few hours of use. So imagine that it now producing 1.5 standard deviation um, less. So not producing 180 degree Fahrenheit is somewhere around producing maybe 160, uh, whatever it shifted to the left. 1.5 standard deviation shifted to the left. Now how do we calculate? Now still we want to drink coffee at 180. So how many cups are we going to actually produce um, using this machine within a specification limit? You look like that minus one is standard deviation that this is our 180 and maybe this is 190, 170. So within that one standard deviation, how many of them are within a spec limit? If you look at this, um, that 30 is within this specification limit. So the number significantly decreases before it was 68, now it is 30. So within this, between these two uh, lines. So still we have the same specification limit. We want to drink the same coffee. However, the machine um, coffee producing distribution shifted to the left, meaning that most cups are now coming uh, less warm than before. So shifted. Now let's go ahead in Excel to do all the calculations. Uh, so our lower specification limit, I'm going to make this cell uh, wrap text. Uh, so I got some more space to work on. And then upper specification limit. And then I have <coughs> So I have the same limit. The limit did not change. Let's copy this all the way up to six. We want to see up to six standard deviation. Now, the even though the uh, the this specification did not change, uh, the the line. If you look at the area under the curve in that um, picture that I showed you from Montgomery, uh, we are the distribution is right now here, and we are trying to find the area between minus one to one under the new distribution. So how do you find that? Now Excel does not know that your distribution had shifted to the left you will have to show that. Now if you look at this, this is 1.5 shift and then if this is 1 then this will be 0.5 plus 0.5 with respect to the new distribution and then this minus 1 plus 1 total 2 and then 0.5 so this point will be 2.5 under that new curve. So the new values for this will be 0.5 this one will be 2.5 corresponding. So the 0.5 corresponds to specification limit minus one, and then 2.5 corresponds to spec limit one. Now I would like to name this as x uh, lower, and then x upper. Now, uh, if you go back to that curve again, the picture, this x-axis is called typically the x values and the y axis is the uh, frequency of any 
probability distribution or probability values probability frequency so let's go back now I would like to make a formula so that I don't have to calculate each of these manually where their new corresponding numbers are so you see that minus 0.5 becomes 0.5 1 becomes 2.5 so I'm looking at a formula something like this minus that new shift like that so if you go like that see so it is shifting it shifted to the right you just don't use it so whatever is shifted you subtract that the easy way to remember it's negative shift just use a parenthesis so basically eventually it's gonna be plus now we copy this all the way down now we want the area before the x lower and then area before the x upper So I can use the same norms, uh, norms dist, norms dist function in Excel is for a standard normal. So this one, copy that to the right, copy that to the down. So this is basically calculating the area all the way up to that 2.5. Uh, from the left all the way from the left to the 2.5 remember normal distribution never touches the x-axis so it goes to all the way to infinite and when we write norms dist uh, any value it calculates a cumulative probability from the left to that point now we want to calculate the area between I want to go back to the curve again so I have probability associated with this line this specification limit 2.5 for that curve and then probability associated with this value minus 1 that is 0.5 for this curve so if I subtract the area up to 0.5 from the area up to 0.25 then we're gonna find this area this is what we want under the new curve so let's go back to Excel subtract that so that will be our percent uh, conformance unit so it's going to be equals this minus this value so 1.3 uh, out of 1 product will be uh, in conformance so let's present this in percentage so it makes more sense for our brain i guess parenthesis times 100 will produce things in percentage so that's in percent conformance so let's calculate percent non conformance non conformance so percent non conformance is 100 minus uh, 100 minus the conformance so now non-conformance in numbers increases because we're not the machine is not producing as it's supposed to now because these numbers are too low typically it is presented in per million so non-conformance a million it's called ppm I'm gonna do a little bit this so I got some more space let's do this non conformance million so I can simply multiply this by million now remember we already multiply by 100 so I'll have to only if I multiply by 10,000 it's gonna be actually within millions so now 
3.4 products out of a million will be defective so um, there will be coffee that is not within the specification now let's calculate the CP value now for non-centered process process capability is expressed as CPK instead of CP now CPK has two um, is this is it uses two formulas to calculate that now let me copy the uh, formula first so for uh, it calculates CP value based on upper spec limit and also calculates CP value based on the lower spec limit so it calculates CPU and CPL and then it um, the CPK is the minimum of these two so my spec limit is still same so let's calculate that CPU which is uh, spec limit minus the mean now right now my mean you see that X bar that's my sample that's my new distribution so that new distribution has a mean of 1.5 Sigma divide by 3 Sigma Sigma cancel out from the numerator and the denominator and copy there and this is gonna copying that upper spec limit however I think uh, right, this one is actually lower this one is upper spec limit so now for the lower spec limit is the other way is 1.5 minus the spec limit so like that and the upper spec limit is this this minus 1.5 divided by 3 so that's fine now copy this all the way down I'm gonna move this copy this now CPK is the minimum of these two values so right now you can see the CP value has significantly changed so this is all about the off-centered uh, centered uh, process capability off-centered process capability